I'm going to finish this course up by discussing some of the techniques you can use when programming or tweaking EXS instruments to enhance the realism and musically expressive quality of its acoustic instruments. This has always been the holy grail for samplers. There are a lot of really high-end sampler plugins out there whose sound designers put a tremendous amount of effort into making their instrument patches sound, and even more importantly, play, respond to the performer's touch, like the real acoustic instruments they're standing in for. In every genre of music, pop, rock, especially orchestral, both musicians and listeners have come to expect an extremely high degree of expression and realism from sample instruments nowadays. They don't always expect it from built-in samplers like EXS or DAW factory libraries, because they assume those plugins and libraries haven't had as much time and energy invested in them as dedicated third-party samplers, whose sound designers live and die by the quality and musicality of their instruments and patches. But, as you've begun to see, EXS is really a lot more capable than its relatively simple front panel lets on. And while Apple's factory library is actually quite good, most sample instruments can be improved on when it comes to realism and natural expressive playing response. And the adjustments aren't always that complex. Sometimes they're just about tweaking the instrument's response to be a better match for a particular performer's touch. For the next several videos, I'll focus on ways the expressiveness, the musicality, of EXS instruments can be enhanced, including some of the more advanced programming techniques, utilizing the advanced features sometimes hidden away in EXS. I've touched briefly on a few of these programming techniques as I covered the parameters that applied to them. We saw the random pitch front panel parameter, which can be set to slightly vary the pitch of repetitive notes, simulating the natural variety you typically get from real physical instruments. We saw the split slider handles for attack time and level, which allow you to set two different values, one for minimum velocity and one for maximum velocity. EXS then scales velocity values in between, allowing the player's touch to control the level and the sharpness of the attack as he plays louder and softer. In the instrument editor window, we saw how to set up multiple velocity zones or layers when you have a collection of samples that includes multiple hits of each note at different levels. Velocity layering lets the performer trigger these different samples in response to different MIDI velocities in real-time performance for very natural, realistic, and expressive tonal and level variations. Coming up, I'll add a little more detail to some of these programming techniques and cover additional ones, like utilizing MIDI controller data from wheels, pedals, and other physical controllers. I'll look at additional ways to add a little randomization to instrument sounds, round-robin and random sample features, for that natural variation that's such a big part of what makes real acoustic instruments so rich-sounding and appealing to play. And I'll go over EXS's application of key switching and articulation IDs, which offer the player a way to vary performance techniques with sampled instruments that include multiple layered key maps of these variations in playing style. So let's get started. Next up, various ways to utilize MIDI velocity and controller data to make EXS instruments respond more expressively to the performer's musical technique.